Welcome back, everybody, to the Home Inspection Whisperer Show. Today, I have Matt Brading. And you know what's really funny? I thought about this the other day. It was like, you know, you and I have been friends now for like three and a half years or four years, something. And we've only met, been in the same room as each other like four times. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's not very often. <laughs> yeah, but we talk all the time. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I just, I feel like, is that what like adults do, right? You know, like- we Adults only... that live so far. I mean, it took me 45 minutes to get to your house. And <laughs> an I, drive, I drive that almost every day to get to work. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess that is what adults do. Are we adults? Yeah. I'm 41. I guess I should consider myself an adult at maybe. some point. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's just like, I was thinking about that when I was uh, eating my breakfast this morning. I was like, I really like Matt, but like, was like, we, we, we need to like, should we hang out more? You know, like <laughs> set aside do, some time more than do, like once a year. Do we have time to hang out more? <laughs> you know, we're, time both, is, we're both running a business here. Definitely plays a factor. Yeah. So, um, this episode today, we're going to cover funny inspector stories. We also are going to talk about goals for our new year. So we, it's in, it's in video and writing at yeah. that point. So yeah. we, we have no choice, but we got we to do, do it. And uh, uh, yeah, I think that's mainly our main goal for this podcast is funny inspector stories that's happened to us over the years. And um, we go from there. That's right. Yeah. So, um, you know, breaking down into the funny stories, my one of my iconic funny stories is like the first, actually, you know, I'm going backwards a little bit. We were bringing in the new year with a beer. Oh, with the beer. Let's do the beer. Yeah, yeah we got the, the beer. beer. So I am thirsty. Yeah. So I, I, I am an IPA drinker. A lot of people beat up on me, but this is a lighter IPA. Right. It's a the Crush IPA. It's by Buffalo Bayou. It's a, I think that is a Houston brewery is, company. Yeah. yeah. And so that's my choice. What would you bring in? Well, so, uh, you know, I came over here today at noon, which, uh, um, you know, is a little bit early for the for the beer for me, yeah. um, but uh, I so I decided I would go with a uh, oatmeal stout, which I figure that's a good breakfast drink. Okay, right, and uh, and you know I like a good stout in the winter time, even though it's like seventy degrees and sunny outside. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a, you know, actually I almost never drink beer in the afternoon unless I'm at the lake, you know? So I was like, Hey, you want to do a beer podcast? You're like, well, I'm not sure about that. Cause it was like, we were first going to do it at 10 AM. <laughs> I mean, give me an excuse. Uh, a friend of mine told me something one time and when I'm at the lake or tailgating, things completely change. And a friend of mine told me something one time that holds very true. You can't drink all day if you don't start early. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> We're in the holidays, you know, so this is, right. this is holidays. So we have to, uh, it's, we, it's okay. You know, I, technically if I was in Ohio right now, I, there's a very good chance I'd be drinking with lunch. You no, know? Well, there you go. Yeah. So it's a, it's, it's a, I got an IPA here. I got, we got some fancy beer glass. Oh man, your beer looks a lot prettier than mine that oh man it's just, I, it's, I don't know if y'all can see that on the, on the channel, but I got the nice golden color, but that's he, his cheers. beer's, yeah, his beer's very Can we manly. Cheers? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Afterthy. afternoon beer. All right. So going into the, the story, I know my ADD kicked in. I make all kinds of plans all the time. And then, you know, I just divert from the path. Mary's not here to keep me on track. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'll do my best. Yeah. So my very first, like, I wouldn't say mistake, but problem happened on a home inspection was I was doing like this townhouse and some flipper came in, of course, and made it all look shiny. And I was taught whenever you like open up faucets and you turn things on, you you grab the faucet handle and you kind of give it a little bit of jiggle. Man, you know, it. Yeah, you got to you, you just like any anybody taking a shower, you know, you, you want to make sure that it, it sits in place, right? <laughs> I grabbed the faucet. It was old property, probably 1980s, you know, galvanized pot plumbing or whatnot. And the faucet literally shoots out of the wall. Like, and it, thank God it was in a bathtub, you know. And so this was before I was carrying like tablets and stuff. I was actually handwriting my notes <laughs> down. And so I had my clipboard sitting there. It had like, it had like 70 PSI. Deflecting, deflecting the water <laughs> in to the bathtub. Oh, good Lord. So I'm like getting soaked, right? And the agent was there. Thank God, I guess, because they would have blamed me for something, you know? So the agent was there. She's like, what do you want me to do? I'm like, we got to find the hot, the shut off. And she didn't know where to look. So I'm like, okay. So I closed the curtain. You hold the clipboard. <laughs> I closed the curtain on the bathtub the best I can. You know, you, you can't only deflect so much water with 70 PSI. And I... <laughs> 
I run outside. <laughs> but it's in these condos, right? So the shutoffs aren't easy to find. Right, right. So I shut off the water, which which I probably shut in the water off the whole home, but it's only for the hot water oh, because no. it's on a boiler. So I run, I literally sprint around the building five times. I like breaking a sweat and I run inside. I was like, I can't find the cold water shutoff. I can't. And it had to be on the cold water side. The, right. the water shoots out. And... Finally, the maintenance man shows up after I'm deflecting the water for so long. He reaches into the wall cavity, like behind the wall and shuts it off and looks at me like I was supposed to know where that was. Well, how was there even a hole in the wall cavity? Why was yeah. that there? He opened up the uh, the kitchen panel sink, oh. I mean, not the kitchen sink, the bathroom sink, and then he removed this panel and then oh, reached down in the Lord. cavity. And I was you like- You never found that. No. Especially under pressure, under yeah, duress. Yeah, under under pressure. I was like, I was like, the, the I would, and then the the agent was like, you know, was like, well, whose fault is it? I was like, anyone that touches that <laughs> faucet, it would have shot out the wall. So it's actually good that I found it, right. you know, and yeah, it would have happened to a homeowner and they would have been in complete disarray. We, they wouldn't know what to do and everything would have gotten wet. They wouldn't have been holding a clipboard, which thankfully <laughs> you yes. had, which saved the day. Yeah. So if, <laughs> there you go, guys. If you need a clipboard, that's what you, that's what you need. Carry a clipboard. Carry a clipboard. <laughs> All right. So I guess uh, I should probably tell a story now. <laughs> this has probably happened to uh, several of us, but uh, um, I, I I showed up uh, at this house, a realtor I've worked with many, many times. Uh, um, it was a house that was on, uh, what's that uh, kind of automatic thing? Not offer pad or what is it? Uh, oh, Redfin or something no, like I that. I had a little code on the door or whatever, whatever it is. I can't remember what it's yeah. called anyway. So um, she told me that that was the, uh, uh, you know, who was selling it. And so long story short, I go to this, uh, uh, house. It's a little, you know, one story kind of gray brick home. Um, and I walk up to it and, uh, I see the sign in the front yard, you know, that said offer pad or whatever it was. And I go to the door, uh, um, and you got to call them and they give you a code to get in. And I punched in the code and I got in and, uh, did my thing, got the house going, uh, um, uh, all the lights on and everything went, went outside, did the full outside inspection. Um, and then, uh, I came back inside and I, I was probably maybe a quarter, well, I don't know, maybe about 15 minutes into my, uh, um, inside inspection and the buyer shows up. Uh, the buyer is a, uh, friend of a friend anyway. So he knew who I was. He walks in, he goes, Matt. I said, yeah. Hey, how's it going? He says, uh, Hey, this, this is the wrong house. <laughs> Oh, no. I said, uh, I said, what do you mean it's the wrong house? Like yeah. the sign's out front. He goes, it's the wrong house. The, the other one's not like, not the next door, but one is two doors down. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. So yeah. I walked outside and like the address was covered up by a bush a little bit. Yeah. I walk outside on the same side of the road, two houses down was another one. Had no sign in the front yard, but being sold by the same company. Oh, no. And so I walked up to it. And, and of course, I got in. I had to. The, the code worked on both houses. Yes. Oh. And, uh, and so, yeah, I, I inspected half of the wrong house. That's actually happened to me before, too. And. The funny thing is, is yeah, there were three houses all for sale at the same thing. You know, whenever you're busy, especially as a solo man operator, you're just knocking them out, you know, and the let you just pull up to the house. The GPS tells you to stop and you stop. Right? right. And that's what I did. I was like, all right, well, I'm here. And I get out and all of them sold by the same person. Right. right. So I get out and I, um, I take the picture of the front door and I just run in and I'm like, man, this place is a dump. Like, <laughs> yeah, this one was way worse. But... <laughs> yes. and the, you know, there's like bald on the ceiling. So I'm like, this is going to take me forever. And then I just had a weird feeling. I was like, you know what? I'm just going outside and look. And I look at the door and you know, I know what you felt like your heart like sinks into your stomach. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I messed up. Yeah. I messed up. I mean, thankfully, that was like a, a an hour and a half in, you know, yeah. or may, maybe not even that because it was a small house. And see, to, to make matters worse, they were both one-story houses, both gray brick, both had a very similar look. Yeah. Like, I I mean, for a second, he goes, well, how's this inspection going? Because maybe I'll buy this one. <laughs> same, same house, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I had to kind of ditch that one and go do the other one, which ended up being in much better shape. Still, but, the uh, problem is our timelines are so tight, you know? So right, like, right. It was the last one of the day. Had it been oh, okay. had it been a bigger house or had it been uh, uh, the the first one of the day, it would have messed me completely up. Probably would have affected both deals actually. Nice. So yeah, what I've learned to do is. I literally double check the front numbers like three times. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm not joking. Like I'll I'll go up, I'll look at the front number, take the picture of the house, and then I'll step back again and I'll look at it again. They're like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "Man, 
you don't know. You like walk into the wrong house, you're like technically breaking the law. You right. know, like <laughs> I look at, you know, being a single man, I'm uh looking up the MLS on just about every one of them that I do, but every mm. once in a while I get to one that I haven't seen. So if I I don't recognize it from the MLS, I do get paranoid. Right. It's like, what are the odds that you're pulling up to the only house that's for sale on the street? It's got a supra as if you, you knew it was gonna have a supra. So it's like it you know it's the house, but right. man, I still get paranoid. I have to go out there and look and look again and make sure. It's not a mistake you normally make twice. That right. is a that is a one a one time mistake. You mentioned like the the GPS and it will it'll stop me like three houses before. Right. And so when it stopped me and there was a sign out front that was for the company that was selling the house, I mean it just made sense. Yeah. All all the stars aligned. It was just the wrong stars. The wrong stars. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the next one, and I I feel bad for sellers a lot because this this question happens all the time to us is whenever you're leaving and the seller's there the whole time, they're always like, Hey, what'd you find wrong? <laughs> and uh, so I did a stucco inspection and it was the actual, they redid the stucco in the back, which was immaculate, but the stucco on the front wasn't redone. And whenever I was leaving, the seller was, uh, I thought it was really funny. The, the, the male seller was like, you know, my, my wife is really paranoid about this inspection. And, you know, can you please just tell us what's wrong? It's like, sorry, I, I can't, you know, and I would do the same thing for you too, if you were my client. And he's like, but she really needs to know what's going on. You know, he was using his wife right. as he was obviously he was the one that was right. concerned. But I was it's like, "It's my wife, man. It's my wife. Yeah, my wife. She's gonna be on me." <laughs> you know. <laughs> yes. And I was like, "Sorry, I can't." But as he's asking this question, I did drill into the stucco there. But even though I sealed it up, the stucco was built all the way down to the ground. Right. And it was around this light fixture. The light fixture wasn't sealed and I had the black lines running out. But whenever I drilled into the stucco, water just started pouring out of the stucco. So as he's asking this question, he obviously doesn't know what he's looking at. So but as he's asking this question, there's like a steady stream of water coming out of the wall set next to him. I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't. I can't tell you. Sticking bubble gum in the hole. Yeah, I was like nothing. I, yeah, didn't find nothing to see here, you know. And I, I felt bad for him, but it's just like you know we're bound by rules, right. and right. and they have to use that. And I wouldn't. I just I can't ethically do it. I can't. Even though I could have been like you know, like look right, you know, just look to your right, you know. <laughs> like, right. You right. can't do it. I found this. Yeah. Well, I, that kind of bleeds into something I wanted to say. And it's it's funny because as you're saying things, I'm writing things down because it's making me remember uh, things that I went through. And right. there's this one, it reinspects, right? Reinspects are always. Uh, Never done. Uh, man, it's, they're, they're challenging on a whole different level. I mean, you know, the, the disappointing thing about reinspects, we've talked about this before. You're not exactly a fan of them, right? So reinspects. Uh, I was talking about reinspects, and we've talked about reinspects before. Uh, um, I don't think you're a real big fan of them. Um, and it's not that I don't like doing my job and that I don't like inspecting and everything. The thing about reinspects is at this point, and we're talking about when I have to, I've done an inspection and I have to go back out and do another inspection based on repairs that have been done. So the reason why I don't like that is because at this point, I've already developed a, a deeper relationship with my client than I did before my previous inspection. Okay. They've already, they've seen my inspection. They trust me. They see all the stuff that I said that was wrong. And now they're trusting me to go uh, make sure that it's done right. But the problem is, is whenever um, you rely on a seller to hire these contractors to do work, their interests are not aligned with the buyer. They just want to check the box and say that it got done. Correct. So when you show up, you see a bunch of halfway repairs. Or not done at all. We're not done at all. Um, and so uh, so one of the things in this house, I show up to do this reinspect, and uh, uh, one of the things was uh, the the front door handle. It was one of those long ones, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. And so it's got the little thumb thing, and then it's it, it, it screws in at the bottom. And so it's like loose. And yeah, the, the thumb handle always falls out. Well, that's that one was actually fine, but the bottom part was not attached, so it was just kind of loose, right? Yeah. And so I'm, I mentioned that in the first report. And so was, I mean, that's a real frivolous thing for me to go back and reinspect. It but they asked silly, for it. But they asked for it. Yeah. So I, I show up. And when I showed up, the owner was there who wasn't there before. 99.9% .9 of their things are moved out. For some reason, he just really wanted to be there for the reinspect. That spells trouble, but whatever. <laughs> um, and so he was there and the buyer's agent showed mm -hmm. up, right? Um, so we're all there. Um, 
And, uh, and I'm just kind of doing my thing and trying to stay away from him because I don't, I'm trying to be non-confrontational. Right. And so, uh, um, I walk up to the door handle and it was still loose. I mean, mm-hmm. I just grabbed it and it was still loose and, uh, and they were right there on me watching me. So I kind of had to explain it. And so I did. And then I just, after I did that, I went on about my business going and finding the other things that needed to get done. And some things actually were corrected. Uh, whenever I got done with those next couple of items, uh, the, the buyer's agent comes out and she says, Hey, can you come check the door handle again? Because he, he, he actually fixed it while you were doing that stuff. I said, okay. So I go up there and I grab the door handle and guess what? It's still loose. <laughs> oh, no. And I go, hey, at this point, I have to say something. Yeah. You know? So I go, well, it's actually still loose. And he goes, he's like, what? He couldn't believe it. He walks over there. It's like, there wasn't a screw in it before. There's not now. So yeah. I don't know what would make you think it, you know, is any better. So when I walked over to it, and this is funny because this ties in both the things we we're talking about. He goes, well, you can't manhandle it. And I go, it's a door handle, not fine china. Like, <laughs> is that what you really first- said? I didn't say that. I said it to the realtor later. Yeah. I didn't say it to him. But, yeah. but no, the, the, I, mean, I was trying, trying to be non-confrontational, yeah, right? right? Yeah. So no, I didn't say anything to him. Yes. The, the truth is, I said that to her later. But, uh, but I, I, I kind of laughed to myself because it's the handle to the front door. Yes. What do you mean you can't manhandle it? <laughs> right. That's literally, it should be able right. to be manhandled exactly so there was that and then um and then of course uh at the end of the thing he says to me uh and i'm i'm like done i had to get up on the roof and uh um i did everything but the roof and and i remembered this roof it had a big old oak tree that was laying oh, okay. on the shingles on on the right on the left hand side of this right, roof right and you know those things just brush the shingles Ooh. and just tear them apart and so I get up on this roof and I, if, okay, I don't like doing reinspects, but when I do roof inspections on reinspects, unless the whole roof's been replaced, this is always a nightmare. And so I reluctantly, I waited to the last thing and I get up on the roof and I, I walked over and I see a couple of nail heads that were caulked over because that was in the report. And then I see a handful that weren't. Mm. And then I walk over to the left side to see those shingles because I'm thinking, well, I mean, okay, if they miss some caulking, okay. whatever, whatever, you know. But if they but if they didn't replace these shingles on the other side, then we have a whole nother story. Right. So I walk over there and not one shingle's been replaced. They're just destroyed. Just like the granules are gone. They have all these weird patterns. They've just been brushed for years with this oak tree. Yeah. And I'm like, what is how is this even how how does he, this guy even have a receipt for roof repairs? And so I go down and I know because this guy's been in my business since I walked you. in. And so I'm like, all right. We need to just get out of here. And so I go down and I'm very friendly. I pack up my bags and go, okay, well, I got everything I need. And uh, he goes, uh, was everything okay? And I just acted like I didn't hear him. And I go, hey, you guys have a great night. Okay, see you later. <laughs> and I start walking towards the door and he goes, what? And he looked at the buyer's agent. He goes, is he ignoring me? I mean, did you find anything? And so I looked back at the buyer's agent, knowing that this is not his information. Right. Like right. this is this belongs to my buyer who's out of state. Right. And so I look at the buyer's agent. I'm not real sure what her, you know, how she feels about it at this point, but I go, I mean, what do you want me to do here? You yeah. know? And so I I said, look, you guys discuss this. I'm gonna go take my stuff to the truck. I took my stuff to the truck, I had to come back in and grab my backpack. I wish I had it because I could have just got in the truck and left. But I go back inside and she goes, hey, you know, we our closing is coming up so quickly and there's very little time to get things done. So I think it's best if we just go ahead and, and bring everything. Everyone's here. Let's just go ahead and bring it to, to the surface. And I go, all right. Well, um, in that case, um, you know, there were a few nail heads that weren't caulked over yet. And he was like, oh, where? Show me where. And I was like, oh, OK, <laughs> look. And I made sure to tell yeah. him before. I was like, hey, I really don't want to start any kind of confrontation. I was very, very just, nice. Just telling you facts. Yeah. yeah. And don't, I'm just, I just looked and I'm just telling you what's there. You paid for a roof repair. So, I mean, you know, don't kill the messenger here, but he really started to get irate. And I was like, okay, look, look, forget the caulking the whole right side or left side, whatever it was of the house, the shingles were just tore up from this oak tree. And he goes, the roofer told me that wasn't a problem. And I go, a, a roofer told you that those shingles were fine. Yeah. And he was like, yes, absolutely. He goes, you need to talk to the roofer. I said, no, no, no. <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> no at this point, no, no. I, I mean, like, you know, you need to call him and show him my, my reinspection report and, 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 and everything. He was like, well, can you meet the roofer out here tomorrow and right. show him this? And, and I go, no, no, man, I cannot do that. I'm booked tomorrow. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm sorry. Just here's, I got good documented pictures of this, that, you know, this is an issue. And, uh, and somehow during this time where I was just trying to keep my cool, 
He called the roofer. Oh, no. I didn't know it happened. I think I was talking to the buyer's agent. He called the roofer. Next thing I know, he slaps down his phone. It's on speakerphone. It says so-and-so roofing on it. And he goes, tell him what's wrong. And I'm like, here we go. Oh, no. And so I, I yeah, had to tell the going. roofer. going. Yeah, I had to tell the roofer. And the roofer's like, well, can I come out there and meet you tomorrow? And I go, no. <laughs> you cannot come out here and meet me tomorrow. I have work to do. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like, I, you know, if you're walking the roof, you can see these issues. I don't understand why I have to show them to you. Yeah. But anyway, uh, he finally, he kept going on. He was trying to convince me that the shingles on the side of the house were not a problem. No. I wish I could show you pictures of it. They were tore up. Yeah, there's Eventually, holes missing. Yeah. I said to him, I said, he, he says, well, the only way to fix that is you'd have to re-shingle uh, that whole side of the house. And I go, okay, so what you're telling me is in order to fix it, you have to re-shingle the side of the house. He goes, well, if you want it done properly. <laughs> I felt this mic drop moment and I just grabbed my backpack and I literally just left. No, you didn't. I did. Yeah. You're like, okay, well, you answered the it, question. It, I mean, there's nothing else that needs to be said at this point. Right, yeah. I mean, who said... Can you please go up on my roof and do an improper job replacing right. and repairing? You know, so anyway, yeah, that was that's about as as, as stiff as an argument I, as I've ever been in. You with know, these you guys. Know, the funny thing is about that story, listening to it and whoever is listening uh, to the podcast. One thing you want to know is this is a, a real thing. This happens all the time. Like reinspections every time we go out there, they and I don't even know if it's like 100 per, that was the seller's fault obviously, but I almost honestly don't even know if it's 100% the seller's fault all the time because I don't think they know. Right. They don't know any better. So like you said, they have contractors that are within their interest where they want the bare minimum done, right, right to get it to pass, so they ask for that and then they do the bare minimum, but we you know, you and I or other inspectors out there, they always inspect to the maximum, right? right? So two opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah, two opposite ends of the spectrum. So like, he's like, well, it's not leaking. And you're like, well, not today. Yeah, not today. Yeah. <laughs> it needs to be done right. You know, so like, I, I think even though it is a funny story, he answered his own argument, but there's a lesson, you know, there's gold in that being like how you handle it and do your best in a non-confrontational way. Like there, that's really important information there. Well, you know? He pushed me to my limit where I wanted to get non-confrontational. And I always try to remain very professional. I will not say that grabbing my uh, backpack on walking out and 100% I was hearing that Thug Life song in my head. Oh, yeah. But I mean, like as I was walking out, I knew it wasn't exactly the most professional thing, but it's like that was at, I was at that breaking point where it's about to get real unprofessional. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so it's like, okay, you answered your question. I'm going to leave y'all on that note. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You got to know your limit too, you know, and it's really hard, you know, talking to a seller because when you know because they are the they're, king of their castle passionate. you yeah, know they, that. that's their house you know and they're emotionally attached and you know as a seller it's really hard to break that attachment you know it you you know he's like well it's not it's it's his problem you know it's it's, it's hard to de describe <laughs> yeah to me uh, someone would be like tell me it's a problem and i'd be like yeah okay i'll fix it you know right but right right i understand well, like, an older lady was moving in this house she that was why there was this extensive list of things to get repaired instead of uh, asking for concessions or whatever mm -hmm. um because the realtor was like hey she's an older lady she's not going to be able to handle all these repairs right. she really wants us in in as good a condition as possible so i had an obligation to my no. client to oh, point yeah, absolutely. out that yeah. this was a problem yeah. it was just silly that they were trying to tell me that it wasn't okay so my my next one is actually why you were talking about like the whole seller thing it kind of goes back to a story my father told me which i think is actually a pretty good one i don't know if i've told you this one before but one time he he showed up early to his inspection he like drove up and he was just sitting there and he you know you, you write on your report you sit there and type it but the seller was out front right and he's sitting there and he's like working on something in his yard probably just trying to fix something before the inspection happens yeah. but he keeps like running in and turning on the sprinkler system in the faucet like shoots through the, the roof and he's like panicking and he runs in, turns it off and he tries to fix it again and runs back outside and the faucet shoots <laughs> up. And he, so my dad's just sitting there watching him, you know, cause he thinks it's funny. You know, this guy is just like <laughs> panicking and like trying to fix his house. It, right. it is kind of funny, you know? And so and 15 minutes before the inspection starts, you know, he gets out of his truck and grabs his tool. And the guy realized for the past hour, <laughs> the <home inspector. laughs> my, my father, the inspector, yeah. the home inspector has been watching him. So now he's all flustered. He's like, oh man, now he's been <laughs> watching me do this. And so he, 
Um, the guy, he's like, okay, well, the house is yours, you know, feel free to do your thing. He hops in his truck and backs out and runs into my dad's truck. Oh, no. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so now he's like, so, you know, just by, he was just so flustered that he just <laughs> runs into my dad's truck and my dad's like, oh, no. But the funny thing is, is that that's not the first time that that's happened to him. Oh, good yeah, Lord. Man. It's happened more than one time. So if you take any lessons from that story, don't park right in front of the driveway park, you know, a little bit canted away right, from it. Right. Yeah. So that's no nosy neighbors have ran into our inspectors cars too, as well. They, you know, they're looking and see what we're doing and then they just tap it, run right into the vehicle. Right. Yeah. It so, can happen. Oh, I want to tell one more, one more. Go so for it. you did get kind of, I just recently, my father told me too, whenever he first started doing inspections, he locked himself on the balcony and I was like, I'm never going to do that. You know, he had to like <laughs> shimmy down a tree because he locked on the balcony. He didn't want to, he didn't want to be embarrassed to, uh, get stuck up there. Right. So I was like, I'm never going to do that. And I would, I was doing a stucco inspection. I was distracted. The balcony door closed and you know, you get that feeling. I was like, I did it. I know I did it. You know, like <laughs> I didn't check the, and it closed by itself. I left it open and then the wind or something blew through the house and it slammed. And I was like, that's it. I, 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 uh, I'm stuck. And so I actually did. I, uh, I shim, it was only a one story balcony, which was nice. So I shimmied off and I, I dangled, like, I wonder if the neighbor saw me, I was like dangling and I let go and I dropped like <laughs> four feet, but I, I made it. Right. <laughs> that actually sends a shock through your body. I don't oh, know. Yeah. I'm not like a parkour guy here, you know, right, like, right, yeah, sure yeah, I'm short too. So right. it's a, yeah, it's to say the four feet's a long, little it, bit longer distance for you. It's like half my body, you know, <laughs> like, that's, that's a decent fall. So, yeah, lesson to be learned from that story. Do not always check the door. Yeah. Like, even if it, you leave it open and you don't plan on closing it, it will close. I got yeah. in a backyard that way because you know how some doors, uh, it you can turn the handle and it feels fine, but on the outside, mm -hmm. it's locked. Yeah. I got in one of those situations. So I double check everyone now because... Uh, I opened it from the inside and it opened just fine. So when I went in the backyard, I closed the door and uh, uh, you couldn't turn the handle from the outside because it was locked on the inside. Mm. And uh, um, and both gates had locks on them and I didn't have keys to them. So I had to climb over the fence. <laughs> that's I mean, that's just as far as a fall, maybe yeah. even further. Yeah, it's, you got to climb up yeah, all over there. I had to climb over the fence. Yeah. Uh, that was that certainly wasn't fun. So we were, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know, we... Real quickly, I want to I want to touch on this, and then there's actually a funnier story. But okay, um, but uh, we were, we were talking about uh, uh, God. I'm trying to remember what this was in reference to because I wrote down one. It was about a post tension cable I found. Uh, oh yeah, I, think I, I remember showed that. you that. Yeah. that. in the garage floor, the there was an exposed in a finished home where someone was about to move in in a few days. There was a post tension cable just exposed at the garage at the surface of the garage floor. Oh, I don't remember what it was about now. So it's like the, the information belongs to the client. Right. right. And so and I even try to take that a little bit into these new builds to a certain degree. I don't mind giving the builder. It's like, hey, this is wrong. That's wrong. I always talk to the builder. But, but yeah. well, I mean, at, there are some things that I feel like I don't really want to share with them because I want my client to know about them before they have a chance to like, okay. get in front of it. Because like, I kind of want you to know what's going on here. Right. The gravity of it. Right. Without, you know, this guy trying to downplay it. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of glad I did that because I did that in this case uh, that the guy came in and he was like, hey, is everything? And I already found it. I just found it. Mm -hmm. And you're like, everything okay? And, uh, and, and I was like, yeah, it's fine. He goes, uh, so did you, did you find anything? And I was like, well, I mean, you know, I always try to play it off. I'm like, oh, you know, typical stuff. You always find stuff, you know, blah, blah, blah. I do that all and the time. And he just kept pr prying at me. And I, and finally, after he kept prying and I kept trying to like, yeah, yeah, whatever. He, uh, I, I said, I finally said to him, Hey, you know, honestly, the information in this report actually belongs to the client. They'll be here in a little bit. And so uh, if they want to share it with you, that's fine. But uh, but I just kind of got to keep it for them. I was trying to be really cool about it. And I could tell he was like, huh, oh, fine then. You know, like he oh, had yeah, you got a little chip on his shoulder. Yeah. And so he left, which is cool. He left me alone. But then the client showed up later. And I was like, hey, so here's what's going on here. And I show it to him. And the clients and the realtors were all there. And it was like, Hmm. this doesn't look like a good situation. I'm like, yeah, I don't really think it is. Right. And uh, uh, I think this is actually a big problem. And, uh, and so they were like, well, hey, 
we want to go ahead and call the builder and see if he'll come over here and take a look at it. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, and so they called him and he was like, Oh yeah, that happens all the time. We're just going to cover it with concrete. Now, mind you, this thing was so close to the surface that the cable, the the sheathing yeah. was scratched. I saw it. Yeah, uh, I remember so you like showing you me that can't picture. Cover it with concrete. No, it's on the top. It's like yeah, above it, the concrete. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like that's not going to happen. I've it, never like, seen that. And and that's, this is why I'm so glad I withheld that information because it's like you're going to downplay it, and I want to make sure they know it's a big deal because you can't downplay this. It's right. a problem. Right. And uh, um, and so and so anyway, did you do he the pre pour? To come back? No. Oh, I didn't. okay. They didn't, they didn't get a pre pour, so but he refused to come back. Oh, really? He would not come back and take a look. I guess he was that offended. And then he found out I called him and something, and he didn't want to come back. Oh no. So uh, I, I mean, like, I don't know if he was just like, well, you were going to be a jerk, so I was going to be a jerk. I was really trying to be nice. But yeah, you he know, didn't want to face it. I, I, I don't know what it is with builders. Builders always give me a hard time. Sometimes. You know, it, it is 50 50. We should you know, do a and podcast I, on that. Yeah. We, we can do a <laughs> podcast on that. We want to say, we want to do a podcast on like how to talk to builders. But I really do have a story that's kind of funny, but it also r- relates to like, you know, growing or understanding how to operate in a home inspection business. You know, a lot of them, they're like, well, I've been building for 25 years, you know, and stuff like that. And it, that always just gets me. You know, it's just like, well, I've been inspecting for eight. Yes, I've never built a home, but I literally just study manuals all the time. Like I sit there, I get bored and I'll pull up stucco manuals and just start looking through them. And then I I just want to be like, do you know how to tape flash a window? You know, just ask them. And they, most of the time it's wrong. They don't know how to do it. So I, um, I, uh, just, Walked up to the home and it's really hard to describe. I'm going to have to drop a picture on the YouTube channel so you can understand it. Cause I even tried to describe this situation to you. Cause the situation is kind of funny. They use Tyvek siding for tape flashing <laughs> around the window. And I was like, you know, that that's not allowed, you know, um, and he was like, well, all these homes are built like this. Like that's, that was his answer. And he Always was like, and I'm not going to change it. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just look up the manufacturer requirements and you'll go from there. He's like, well, it's built to code and all the city code inspectors find it. I was like, have you met a city code inspector? Yeah. And, you seen what they do? Yeah. And I was like, they, just a, a fact for you guys, city code inspectors do not even need to be code certified. For two to three years, they have a job requirement to get certified. But if they are a new city code inspector, not required. They don't need yeah, to have it. Yeah, Crazy. not required. Yeah, so that is funny. So the thing is, I had to go back home and read the manual, go over. And I just told them, I don't argue with builders at all. I'm just like, that's fine. I'll just go to the manual and see what's allowed, see what see what they approve. And he was like, okay. And all I do is I just cut and paste it, throw it in the report. And I don't know if you met my client, but my client is a bulldog. Like, (laughs) And and she ripped him a new one and she made him like answer. She asked questions like, she asked questions like, well, the manual says this and you're doing this. So how are we going to fix it? You know, so instead of just saying you need to go do it, right. She made him answer great. the question like they now they're out there ripping off all the siding and they are uh, taping the windows up. You oh, know? so they, they sided it after that. They were oh, like, oh, we're, just, we're just going to do that. I did the inspection and they started siding the house uh, they because they were they, just going to get away with it. But she and her family go out to the house every day and they caught them, you know, and that that's a real thing that actually does happen. You know, they, they'll side up the house like that. So Crazy. you have to stay on them, you know, and I, I bet there's a hundred houses in that neighborhood with no tape flashing, Insane. you know, on the windows. I love these builders and, and, and stuff that say, I've been doing this for 25 years or something. Yeah. So, okay. So how many homes do you see in a year? Oh, that's a great question, right? Because I'm upwards of 400 plus. Right. So where are you at? You know? yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, they might. You say they are good, right? They build like a 100 maybe, you know, right. with a track builder. Right. And if they're a custom builder, they're building five or right. six, right? So, you know, I mean, like a good custom builder. <laughs> there's something to be said about that. Right. You know yeah. I mean? So it's you not see just, hundreds right. in a year. Yeah, I think before I really even broke into the multi-inspector firm, I saw over 2,000 houses, you know, right. like, so it's just... The experience. It's experience. I mean, it, it, it might, it's, it's at a different scale. It's for a different reason. But, you know, when you've seen more properties than they have built, yeah. I mean, that means something. It does mean something. Yeah, so years versus in the business versus, like, the amount of properties and research we've done yeah. on properties like as, as home inspection it's so funny it's like we're 
we're almost like building scientists in a way, you know, building doctors. Right, we're not right. so much to code inspectors. Degree, yeah. Like, right. how is this house performing? How's it performing? Yeah, not yeah. necessarily what's up to code, but how's it going to work? Yeah, how's it going to work? Because yeah. just because even if it's right or wrong doesn't mean it's going to work. Right. Yeah. The, it's built to code and they're like sticking plumbing stacks in a valley. You <laughs> yeah. Know, like, yeah. Well, yes, it technically it's built to code, but thousands of gallons of water is going to run across this penetration, you know? It ain't right. It ain't right. <laughs> okay. Anyways, that was a really long story on a story, but the, that's okay. the, the that's thing okay. is, is yeah, the, there's gold in there. there. There's gold. I think, I think there is too. Yeah. So Do we have time for another? Yeah. Okay, just one more. Short yeah. one? Oh, we got a lot of time. We got a lot of time. I think we so. Have, yeah. We have nothing but time. Time. All right. I think there's a song about time being on my side or something. <laughs> you should drop that in. You, uh, I almost asked you to bring your guitar. You sing an intro <laughs> song for us. Next time. Next okay. Time. So um, I uh, show up to an inspection of this very large house. Uh, um, and I think I was under the impression that the seller was not going to be home. But when I pulled up, there was a couple cars in the driveway. So I was like, okay, seller's probably home. Not a big deal. This happens from time to time. It's not my favorite situation, but it is what it is. And uh, and I, I'm working with a realtor who I know very well. And uh, um, and I know at some point the buyer's going to be mm-hmm. coming along. And so I ring the doorbell. And the I knew it was going to go uh, bad whenever the guy opened the door and, and he wasn't wearing a shirt. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, And I was like... Hey, <laughs> I'm here to do your home inspection, and uh, um, and he was like, "Yeah, sure, come on in." And it's like, Wait, "Hold on a minute, you know, yeah. like get dressed first, you know." But anyway, I I stood there in the in the uh, in the doorway, and I gave him a brief rundown, which he couldn't be any more disinterested in. But <laughs> just uh, let him know where you're going to go in the home. I want him to know what you're going to do. I'm going to run all your appliances. I'm going to change the AC and the heat on all three systems. Um, I'm going to, uh, um, you know, do this and that. I just go into the whole thing. With uh, I do that too. Open because they, so they're just aware of what you're doing, you know, right. open line of communication. I tried yeah. my best to tell him that I was going to be doing everything. Right. And he says, okay, yeah, no problem. And I go, okay, well, I'm just going to go to my truck and get my gear and bring it in here and get started. And he says, yeah, okay, no problem. And so I, I go to my truck and I'm just like, like shaking my head like well, what is this going to be like right <laughs> yeah. and so i go and i grab my stuff and i put it inside when i got inside he had already put a shirt on but he was cooking spaghetti this is always a problem right because when cooking, like, he's you literally got oven. meat thawing mm-hmm. he's got something in the oven he's got something on the stove and it's like i don't it this is like not that long ago like so this is like during like covid and stuff right mm-hmm. and like this guy's not concerned he's not wearing a mask or anything and that's fine but it's like do you really want me all up near your food that you're cooking right. and all that yeah. stuff like, you, you i don't know where you've been i just said like this is what i was going to be doing i don't know like and and you know these kinds of things should be common knowledge before you know you're gonna your your listing agent should be like hey this guy's gonna come in there and run all your appliances turn on all your lights all this stuff but anyway it's like okay well you just gotta deal with this right you yeah. gotta roll with just this. adapt so I and overcome rolling, i get outside then the buyer shows up buyer shows up think, thinking that the seller's not going to be there and he flips it because he's like ah I, I'm in from out of town. This was supposed to be my time with the house. So he calls, flipping out, talking to his agent and all this stuff. Everyone chills out. Finally, he comes up. We have another conversation. And the and the seller walks out and starts introducing himself to him. This can go good or bad. Right. I but agree. This, it's always 50-50. But, but this went well. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that they, they loved like each other. They're not best friends, but right. they uh, spent some time talking, talking about the house and they were out of my business. So I was cool with it, right? right? Both of them. They were just doing their own thing. This went on for like 45 minutes. This is a big house. Had a pool, big old sprinkler system. You know, I had to get on the roof. It's like and everything. a five so hour. It long. took a long time. Yeah. yeah. So by the time I got uh, done with the outside, the buyer was ready to leave. And uh, um, and I said, okay, well, I'll get you the report later on tonight or whatever. And he, he split. And then uh, I went back inside and started doing my thing. I guess at that moment, um, that was when the seller decided he was just going to be my shadow. He followed you the entire time? The whole time. And I mean the whole time. And uh, and it was so like, uh, it, it really will throw you off your game, right? Mm-hmm. And so like when I get up to his master bedroom, I realize that there's a balcony out there which I didn't realize was there. And I walk out and I start checking that out, check out the windows, check out the door and all this stuff. And look at anyway, look at everything. And I notice there's an outlet out there. So I, I plug into it. It should be GFCI protected, right? So I plug into it, click the GFCI. It worked. And I was like, okay, here he is just right up in my face, right? Now, normally... I would go right down and reset that GFCI right away. Do you really? I always wait. 
Well, I, I, I will do one or two things. I'll either put a note in my phone or mm, I will, uh, or I will uh, go like a, down and do it right. Like a reminder. I don't want to forget. Right. Now, uh, if it's, there's certain things that I will wait to the end, like to reset breakers. And yeah. that's like a thing. Like I go reset all the breakers at the end. It's part of, part of my deal. Like if it's like the dishwasher, the, wa- the laundry room, all that stuff, I'll just go click, 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 and then I'm done. But this was like in the garage, you know? Mm-hmm. And so like I, I just need to go do it or I, because I'm not going back in the garage. So I just need to go do it. But like this guy, I've already been up and down the stairs a couple of times. He keeps asking me questions. He's just all up on me trying to figure out what I found that's wrong the whole time. So it's just really nerve wracking. So I just picked up my phone discreetly and went, Reset GFC on garage in 30 minutes or whatever. You know what I mean? I, and so that was supposed to alert me to tell me that. Well, this guy stays on me to the point where like he goes in the attic with me. Yeah. I found a furnace that wasn't working. So he's trying to fix it. Oh, man, like, I hate yeah, that. All yeah. this stuff, you know, it's just bad, bad news. And so then finally, like, I, I don't know what happened, but somehow I missed the notification to go reset the GFCI and I forgot. Oh, you went home. I went home. Yeah. And uh, um, and so, you know, the inspection's over. I go home. It was a hell day. You know, I get, I get yeah. home. I finish the report, send it off and everything. And then like a week later. Uh, I get a call from, you know, my, the agent that I was dealing with and she was like, so, Hey, I, I got this call. And it, apparently the guy was really irritated. He was complaining about you. He said, this guy was way overbearing. He called me overbearing. <laughs> and he was over you. I guess because like, I was like doing everything, like opening all the windows and, and turning on all the lights and everything. Right. He thought that was overbearing, even though I told him I was going to be doing that. I was like, okay, well, part of the practice, but whatever. That's actually a compliment. I, yeah, think. I, I, I thought, yeah. you know, if he thought I was overbearing, that means I'm doing a really good job. He just didn't like it. But uh, but anyway, but his real complaint was that uh, I, he said I unplugged, but it was a GFCI and a freezer. Oh, and it thawed man. out some meat and stuff, right? And I, yeah, and, we've and done so, that. Yeah, we bought it. Yeah. Well, and I was fully uh, uh, ready to do that. But the uh, agent, like I say, I know her very well. And she had already heard, I told her that when I got back, I was like, you got to hear this story. Because oh, okay. I mean, like I'm leaving a lot of stuff out, right? right. So I give her the rundown of this shirtless spaghetti guy, like <laughs> following me around and all this stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and so, and she was like, you know, because the whole thing was, I, and I wasn't trying to get out of it. I told her, say, hey, I'm responsible. Like, that was my fault. You find out what I owe them, and I'll go buy them a gift card to a grocery store. Like, I'm sorry about that. You know, right. that's my bad. And she goes, I appreciate you taking account, of, you know, responsibility for your actions. But, um, you know, this wouldn't have happened had he not been looking over your shoulder. I was like, yeah, that yeah. would not have happened. Yeah, I would have gone down and reset the GFC yeah, right then. You're just doing your routine. Right. right. But he broke my routine. And so, uh, uh, anyway, she goes, let me just make a call and see what happens. Well, she got back to me later and she goes, well, so the agent answers and she, you know, the one that called and, and gave her the complaint, she goes, okay, so first of all, the words, which I won't say on this podcast, that he used to describe me were the exact same words that I used to describe him previously. Right? <laughs> and she goes, uh, and just let me tell you, he answered the phone or answered the door, not wearing a shirt and was cooking spaghetti. <laughs> and the, <laughs> she said that the listing agent was like, Cooking spaghetti. <laughs> so cooking spaghetti's become a thing with me and this girl. But uh, yeah. but yeah, so anyway, she just it just died. They didn't ever ask for any money because she thought that was just completely uh you know, he, he was kind of out of line the way he followed me, the way he uh answered the door. So it just it just went and it just went away. And, yeah. uh, and sometimes so that happens yeah. though. There's a there's a lot of moving parts in a business and a lot of money's being thrown around. The last thing they probably care about is two or three hundred dollars of meat sometimes, you know. Yeah. They're, Man, that was a good one. That was good. Uh, yeah. So um, moving on to the next one, I locked myself on a balcony, right? So the next one is that one thing that you can learn, and I always think it's funny, is if you ever have a tenant inside of a property. The talk. worst. Well, I don't know if it's the worst. Talk to them. It's the worst. No, it's not. No, I actually enjoy a tenant being present because you just say, hey, uh, are you experiencing any problems with the property? They will literally walk you to every problem in the prop in the property. That is the only good and, thing and it's something that I don't I may have probably discovered because I there was termite damage on the structure and I would have recommended for a treatment anyways. But whenever I was going through this property, he was like, Yeah, you know, when the sun rises in this direction and it hits this wall, this wall gets a little hot and these black flying bugs fly everywhere. <laughs> I was like like the whole wall, he's like, yeah, the whole wall, they just come out pouring. And I'm like, that's pretty bad. And he's like, no, no, they're they're harmless. They don't bite. They Nothing happens. And I'm like, 
They're oh. eating your house. <laughs> but if anyone's listening, just to let you know, those are called swarmers and they're termites and they were eating the entire structure. So I I was hoping because I was there in the afternoon that it would happen because that's a fantastic inspection photo. I've been swarmed and, on, a, on a roof yeah. before, but not like that bad. No, yeah. It, it was an old home house, 1940s. So... Uh, Funny story, but also at the same time, make sure that if there's a tenant, yeah, tenants present, make sure that you always ask them. They will walk you to water stains, mold. They'll tell you about the neighbors. And then also neighbors are great. Ask the neighbors. The neighbors will be like, oh, yeah. Neighbors that, are good. They're, they're like, that house flooded. You know, your neighbors that are loyal. Happened. To, yeah. yeah you're no, your late neighbors are loyal to you when you're there. Right. As soon as you move out, loyalty's gone. Right. I'm telling you, it's, it's gone. Yeah, yeah. So they will tell you. Everything. Yep. They're like, oh yeah, that house set windows open for three months. You know, they'll tell you anything. Whenever it floods or rains heavy, they're like a bunch of water sits right there. <laughs> and I'm like, goes right in the front door. You're right in the front door. So always ask tenants and neighbors if they're out present. Just just talk to them. You know, a friendly conversation, ten minutes, you'll learn a lot. I uh, a, a, cl- a client of mine. I, I told him. I said, "Look, I think this house may have flooded. Do you have any disclosure of flooding?" And they were like, "No," and uh, and so they uh, were outside and they saw a neighbor out and they're like, "Hey, man, how you doing?" And they yeah. went and chatted with him. They came back and they were like, "Oh uh, yeah, this house, all these houses flooded." And I was like, "They didn't even disclose oh, it." You? No, no, you well, just, disclosed. You just had a weird feeling because two different color paints, all it was four like, feet or it, something. Yeah, like a couple of areas. I could see the line in the drywall. Mm-hmm. We got all new flooring. It was in an area where I was just kind of like, mm, I don't know. It just right. you can see the signs usually. Nice. Most people don't do a real good job of covering that kind of stuff. No, right? it's it's hard. You it have to paint hard. the whole house. Like, yeah, well, but they pa- don't painting. But they did though, right? Mm-hmm. Because it was like a remodel situation, like okay. or not remodel, but it had been updated. So mm-hmm. they did paint uh, the whole house. But it's really a matter of how they tape and float that drywall scene. Okay, because uh, if you don't like really. Uh, uh, for all you drywall guys out there, you really got to uh, uh, blend your your texture. You right. know? And if you don't do that very well, it's just a telltale sign every day. You, you look just at, can you see, see the that line. line the su- yeah, we use I use a flood flashlight and it, with like yellow lights and stuff, it breaks it up. But if you have a flood white flashlight, yeah. it shines up like pure daylight. I got a new it. one. It's a, it's a new Phoenix. I can't remember the name. The, the PD40 No, R2? it's a different one. Oh, really? It's a different one now. And uh, um, because remember I was carrying that one that was more like a spot? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I got a new one that they came out with. It was a new light. Mm-hmm. And uh, I saw it and I, there's, I can't remember what it was I liked about it. I think it's even brighter. Like it, it's got even like some... 18,000 lumen situation that comes on for like 40 seconds. Really? Not really. No, not really. <laughs> I'm, I'm exaggerating, but it's like some high lumen situation that, that doesn't last very long, okay. of course. But, uh, but I mean, it's super bright and I really like it and it works like the PD40 or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, um, but it's just a little bit different shape and everything. I, I might like it. I might do a tool breakdown on it. Yeah, tell that. me what it is. Should've I'll buy it. it. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a tool junkie. I'll, I'll buy it. Like it's a good, it takes a different uh, battery than the other ones, but. All right, cool. So we're coming close to the end of the podcast here. And one of the things that we wanted to talk about was um, our goals, you know, before we go into the next year. And I can kind of lead off on this. Yeah, Do you want ahead. me to? Yeah. So we're going to record our goals so we can record it, you know, by the end of the year. We'll do this again. I'm sure we'll have some funny stories to tell <laughs> again by the end of the year. Uh, so my goal, uh, this year is I want to, uh, we, we have interviewed a lot of people and we found two to three people to join our team, which is nice. So Great. I want to try to successfully, successfully train at least two of them. I'd say most of the time one person drops out because we're pretty intense, you know, the way we do things. Sure. A lot of people get in the home inspection industry and they, uh, uh, they think it's, you know, almost like. Whenever someone sees us working, they're like, oh, man, that's easy. You know, right, yeah. yeah, you don't look at it. You're just looking at some cracks in the in the wall and stuff. But like they don't understand like the constant role of chaos that we operate in and the level of professionalism and customer service that's all involved. Also report writing, you the know, liability. Like, the too, liability. Like, and, and I don't mean like the liability. Like, yeah, you're responsible. But but it's like. You need to remember to look at everything because if you miss something that can come back to haunt you or, or just, you know, all the stuff that you need to know, yeah, it's not just that simple, man. It's, not, it's, not, it's not simple. So I expect my goal is two of them. I want two of them to uh, be finished all the way through. So that'll make you at what? Uh, 11. Yeah, there'll be 11 of us. It's crazy. You know, 
Just 11 inspectors? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like you should go for a dozen. A dozen? Just 12? <laughs> it just sounds better. Just, you know, Pr Preston Sandlin, oh, when, uh, he's an inspector in the Carolinas, and he has a massive team. And one thing I, I – yeah, I wanted a massive team whenever I – you know, met him and stuff. But then I realized that, you know, a smaller like family style team seems to be right. working. But what he said was, I think that's what he has. What he said was, is always be looking, you know, always be hiring, but, you know, don't choose everyone, right. you know? So like you're always going through this interview process and you only choose the people that want to be part of your family. So you're always you know? hiring the right person. Right. The you're right never person. never not hiring. And not the people that didn't, uh, we didn't go with doesn't mean that they're not good people. It just means no, that th they didn't fit with our style of inspecting or what we want in a team member. You know, we look, we want to make sure they fit because we've had a virus in our company before and it really does affect the whole system. It yeah. does. I, I, I come from a line of work where I've experienced that. Yeah, it's, it's w weird how one person can just send a ripple effect through, even though we don't see each other every day, you know, it, it can cause it. And then the uh, second one, my second one is I want to grow the YouTube channel to 10,000 subscribers. So I'm, I'm kicking it on overdrive. Oh, having me on, that ought to, that ought to help. I got like 14 subscribers. <laughs> So uh, I'm looking to get 15 today, you guys. Yeah. So if you look up map rating and uh, just, you know, click the uh, the subscribe button. And honestly, if you like his videos, you should you should definitely watch his videos because I, I like it. You're doing a really good job at telling Thanks, the story. You, yeah, I posted in the Home Inspection Whisperer group and, you know, it's when you're doing a video, it's, it's a story, right? right? Like, so, and I, and I like that. All right. So what's yours? My goals. Okay. I got three really. Okay. The first one was one I actually had, I think it started last year or it might've even been the year before. And I just kind of forgot about it. And, and now I feel like I, I really do want to try to achieve that. And that's to get ICC certified. Okay. Yeah. That's an open book test, by the way. It is. Yes. I, yeah. I'm not sure if I knew that or not, but uh, um, I know I, I want to get the study material and go through mm -hmm. it. And uh, um, yeah, I think I was told that it was open book. I've had that goal several, several years in a row. And I just don't know. It gets it gets lost. I'm not telling you not to do it. Yeah. yeah it, and there is money in it, too, as well, because you can do code inspections. It's just I don't like code inspections. I don't want to do code inspections. It's the bare minimum. But, right. But it does give you credibility. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. So I want like, credibility. I, I want to be able to, uh, I mean, not really throw it around so much. But I mean, like, there, there is one thing. I feel like your dad said this. And it's like, you know. Most of the, especially when you're talking to builders and whatnot, like if you're IC cert, ICC certified, you're the only one in the room probably that is. So it's oh, like, yeah. it gives you, uh, you know, something to kind of, kind of brag, not bragging rights, but like it shuts them down. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, like, well, like, are you? <laughs> so, yeah. So when they're saying it's built to code, be like, your next line is, are you ICC certified? The, that's a definite no. Right. You know, right. they're going to say no. It's and, a hard test. It's not an easy one, right. even though it's open book. But you have to. I think the reason why it's open book, because it's impossible to know all the codes. Right. 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 But the, you need but to you know, need how know how to navigate the book, know, navigate the book and where to look. Right. So that that's the biggest part of being ICC Which certified. We're totally yeah. better at that than, than they are anyway. <laughs> as, that's as that's literally is. all I do it, is yeah, I look just, at manuals. It's, that's part of our training yeah. is that not theirs. Nice. So the next one is uh, uh, become a certified applicant applicator for a termite. Oh yeah. Uh, um, Get your own WDI, business. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. I, that is a, uh, is a goal just because it's costing me money and time doing, uh, um, doing it the way that I'm doing it. So Honestly, I won't go into, but I have a, a pretty good secret for you. The test is exactly the same. Well, there you go. Folks. <laughs> it's, 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 you don't panic. Like the test you've already passed, you just go and apply to be a certified applicator and they give you the same test. <laughs> January, 20, January 1st, 2021. <laughs> just go apply. Matthew Brady became a certified applicant. You just have to go and do the hours, you know, the education hours. I think it's like 16 or 32. It's really not that many, yeah. but it's mainly because you have two out, two years of yeah. Yeah. Uh, technician. And then you just sign up to take the test. And I was all panicked because I studied really, really hard. I tried to memorize everything and I sat down to take the test. It's like, this is the same test I took three years ago. <laughs> Crazy. I, I'm sure of it. <laughs> So the, the final thing for me as far as goals is to uh, work on – so, you know, you know my story. Some of you know my story. Um, this is going to be uh, – at the end of 2021 – or at the end of 2020 is going to be the first 
full year of doing nothing but home inspections really? that I have in the books. Yes. So I got, I mean, I've been doing it for what, four years or so, but, uh, um, you know, most of that I was working part-time with another right. company. And then 2019, I did, uh, um, most of it was just home inspection, but then part of it was mm-hmm. with the other company. But this is the first full year where right. I've done nothing but home inspections. So it's something that I get to look at and go, okay, this is what to expect if I, if I, you know, keep the hustle up, keep, keep this is what I do. This is what a year looks like. You're following so, the system. Right. right. Yeah. But I, like, so now, okay, so I can look at a year. So now I can make some adjustments on that that work a little bit better for my lifestyle. So, um, you know, sense. we've talked yeah. about like, uh, um, you know, work-life balance and all that stuff. But uh, I just want to try to, uh, understand what a year looks like so that I know what to expect and so that I can feel good about, okay, I can take these couple of days off and I, and I know how to navigate that a little bit uh, to, to take some time off for my family and for other things that I need, right. need or want to do. I can navigate that a little bit better because I know what's around the corner a little bit better. You, you know, what one thing that I can kind of relate to that, because whenever I was first in the shoes, I did it for five or six years like in the field full time before I really started taking time for myself. And I actually burnt myself out, I think, when I did it. Um, but the work-life balance. And the one thing you got to realize, you live in Houston, Texas, which is nice, right. you know, compared to like most the market. of the, yeah, the marketplace. I'm not saying like our place where we live is nicer than everywhere else. I'm just saying that it never, you know, it never, it's just a good market to live in. Yeah, it's booming. So just remember, it's always going to be there, you know, more or less. I mean, you got to you, you go get it. As, as long as you're doing a good job, right. you're following, you know, the uh, we, with our book, I'm going to drop our book. We have a marketing process that we follow. And it just really is a good marketing where you have a steady stream of just business and it doesn't die really too much in the slow season. You know, you're are, are you still busy right now? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You for, you had to force to take your four days off. Yeah. Right? I did. And, and well, how does that feel actually? It feels fantastic. <laughs> it, there's no no doubt yeah. because I'm I'm an entrepreneur. And right. so I have that little thing in the back going, Always. why are you doing this? You're missing out on yes. jobs. Yeah. Uh, you know, what is your problem? Um, but uh and, and I know that like next week's going to be stressful because I already have half of it booked. Oh, yeah. So I know that going in, I'm already in the weeds and I'm going to start getting calls and I'm going to start running out of time. And there's, but, but you know what yeah. though? Again, I've seen a whole year. I know what's ahead. Um, I know how to kind of pick it. I'm not, I don't usually try to pick and choose jobs, but it mm. kind of gets to a point sometimes where you have to sometimes. Right. Um, uh, and so, you know, if, if I get to a point where I have to do that, I don't feel so bad about it because I know what it looks like. I'm going to keep, you know, trying to keep my relationship with the people that I work with on a regular basis. I'm going to try to make them happy. I'm going to, uh, um, try to, uh, keep, just keep cranking out a fantastic product and try to make sure people keep wanting to call me back. Uh, and, and if I miss a little job every now and again, Again, I'm not going to lose much sleep over it. I'm going to try not to. Right. Yeah. That was the hardest part, I think, for me. It was like I was always like, I have to get to this. I have to get to it. And then now I'm just like, hey, we will do our best. We'll get there if we can. But it is what it is. <laughs> like it's if we. It's just like after a while, I'm just used to the stress, I guess, of of it looming there. But I agree. Like whenever I'm off, it it just feels weird. Yeah. 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 All right. Cool. So that's it. So we're going to uh, end the podcast there and uh, catch us on the next one. And I believe we were going to try to talk about like how to talk to builders. You know, that that was a strategy, but I don't know. We'll come up with something. Maybe. So yeah, catch us on the next one. Thanks, guys. See you next year. Bye. (laughs) See you next year. (laughs) 